This week on the Internet Cafe, the Grim Reaper on the web. This is the City of the Silent, a website with information about cemeteries. Meet Joe Malloy. He's a deadhead who built the ultimate online shrine to Jerry Garcia. If you're into animals, we'll show you the virtual pet cemetery and meet Michelle Weaver. She used to be an educator. Now she runs a very alive website called Toontown. And if you have a macabre sense of humor, we'll show you the Wells pop cult death pool. The Grim Reaper on the web this week at the Internet Cafe. Net Cafe is made possible by RonDiamond.com, the oldies site on the Internet. Music and memories from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, not just another jukebox. Additional support comes from the law offices of Ivan Hoffman, lawyering with integrity for Internet law, copyright, trademark, and other intellectual property law. And by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. Well, we're talking about the Grim Reaper on the web, the subject of death on the web, which you would think it'd be kind of morbid, but some of these sites are actually kind of funny, aren't they? Yeah, I think we're having a little fun here with death, believe it or not. Uh, there's a couple of uh, games out there where you can actually try to pick the next five celebrities that are going to die, and if you get it right, you it's win prizes. It's irreverent. There's no question yeah, about that. Yeah. yeah. Who would you pick? Well, that could go on forever, but I bet there was a few people people didn't pick last year, that's for I sure. I mean, you think you can sort of, is that an appropriate thing to have on the web, all this sort well, of, kind think, of sick stuff about Actually, that? you know what, I think a lot of people don't like to talk about it, so I think if you can find a vehicle, whether it's comedy or whether it's more emotional, like the virtual pet cemetery for me, yeah. uh, I think it's good. Any way that you can express your feelings is a good thing. I agree, I agree with you. You know, I mean, death, I mean, there's a lot of grief and grieving in death, yep. and people get through that by talking it out with other people. I think the net really provides an opportunity for people Sharing to get comfortable and get, you know, get this right. the, the pain off your chest. Or... A good example is the uh, Jerry Garcia shrine. Exactly. You know, people exactly. were so upset when he died. People have a need to do that, and the web gives them that opportunity. Right. So, Joel, you've created a, a website. It's called The City of the Silent. And it's, I guess from my perspective, the one-stop shop for anybody who's interested in graveyard histories and, and the whole anthropological aspect of, of death and dying. Tell me a little bit about the things that I would find if I went to your website. In developing The City of the Silent, I've tried to put an emphasis on cemetery culture, remembering that cemeteries are places primarily for the living, places where we engage with the fact of death. And so I have, my site includes things from a reader's sharing board to a collection of epitaphs to a discussion of cemetery symbolism, a timeline of history, and, and even a reader's sharing page where people can tell about what they have discovered. Because that's one of the most interesting things about taking part in any field of knowledge is sharing your discovery. Yeah, it's, it was actually really interesting because when, when I went to your site, I guess I had this preconceived idea that you know, the topic of cemeteries was a, a morbid one and somewhat twisted and I, I expected to see vampires and that's not at all the experience that I had. I and mean, when I went there, as you say, there was a discussion about symbolism and depending on different cultures, the different aspects of it. So from my perspective, it was a really fascinating site. Uh, what's the feedback been from the, the people who've gone to your site? What were, what were the experiences that they talked about? <laughs> Many people find it wonderful and are very pleased to find a site where they can realize their interest in cemeteries. Some people have been brought up to think that interest in cemeteries is very sick. And for this reason, I coined the term taphophilia, which is love of tomb literally love of tombstones, to distinguish us from necrophiliacs. Yeah, which is a completely different thing. Which is something, we, yeah, something we can't discuss. So typically, discuss. In, in England, I, re I remember as a child, we used to go to the, to the graveyards and we'd do uh, rubbings of the tombs. And, and that's another thing that you've got at your website as well. So even for kids, that they could go and do tomb rubbings, and there's actually a... Provided they take the proper precautions, I wouldn't do it on an old stone. No, okay. But on granite stones, it's just fine. Granite is very strong, but I think we need to be aware that with our old heritage, that some of the softer limestones and slates it's can be gentle. damaged by tombstone rubbing. Now, another thing about your site is you had a, a massive list of links to other sites, and it also broadened my horizon in seeing the scope of the things that are out there that are not so much ghoulish, but actually educational and informative sites. What are some of the sort of the highlight sites that you'd like to, to mention? Well, I like Larry Kestenbaum's The Political Graveyard, which is a list of politicians buried around the country. I like the Orange County Coroner's page, which gives you a different view on death. So the Coroner's page, what's that about? 
Well, one of the most interesting features is they have a list with pictures and dental records of missing persons they have found over the years who still remain unidentified. And I find it impressive that out of all the millions of people in Orange County, there only seem to be about 40 people who are unknown. That's pretty amazing when you consider the number of people that go missing. What are some other sites that you like? Wendell White's Cemetery is a fascinating site that has, deals with a small black American cemetery in New Jersey that Wendell discovered and just started doing research on and, dis and found out things about their farming, how they lived. These were free blacks before the Civil War, and it's revealing a, an angle of history that is not often looked into. No, it's really interesting. It, it's so true because what, going to your site, I saw a lot of things that gave me some insight into the way people lived over periods of time and, you know, talking about epidemics and, you know, children's uh, graveyards and so on and so forth. Really fascinating stuff. Joe, you've created uh, Jerry Garcia's Hate Street Shrine on the web. And right. I got to ask you a question. I think you're kind of a, a Jerry Garcia aficionado at this point. Is Jerry really dead, or is he still out there somewhere? He's actually either on the web as source code, I think, or he is out there in some other fashion in everyone's hearts. Definitely. Some people have said he might Definitely. be in their lava lamps, but that's that's another right. story. He was really a beloved character, and right, I'm sure exactly. that's what probably prompted you to create this site. What, how did how did this begin? Well, it was actually uh, the day that Jerry Garcia died, which was a sad day. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually a sad day on the net, mm -hmm. and I was at work and decided uh, at the end of the day that I'd go out to the uh, Hate Street shrines that I knew were going to be happening at right. that time. Right, people lived, were out there on the street. People were out there, so I went and I took uh, pictures of that with my digital camera uh, and tried to capture the event uh, as much as I could. Went back home, put that on the web, uh, linked it up with various Grateful Dead sites that immediately gave feedback, mm -hmm. and then I got a lot of feedback from other people that were mourning his death so all people, over the world. So people came to this site, people were right. interested. Now you said it was a sad day on the net when that happened. Now the, the right. sort of the myth or the, the stereotype would be sort of that, you know, deadheads, maybe they're not really into technology. Well, I, and I disagree. Right. I mean, so they were, they like were I think, you know, I, and I ran into it and it's, it's evident in my guest book, which I have. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of... So uh, people sign in when they A lot of people sign in and, mm -hmm. and leave, you know, what they do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were involved with, you know, the internet technology at that time. Right. Uh, a lot of very intelligent people that were also deadheads. Okay, so it is a, it is a stereotype. Right, exactly. Now, now, you said that uh, uh, you know you had a, a deep caring for Jerry Garcia. So, how have you memorialized him on this site? What are what are some of the things that are up there? Well, it's sort of a work in progress. My site mm -hmm. it didn't really just end with his death. Then mm -hmm. it's you know almost, ongoing. It's an ongoing right. uh, thing where I'm also you know I'm getting whoever signs in the guest book as well as I'm adding various mm -hmm. other multimedia things that I add to the mm -hmm. site to amuse people, to make people laugh, to make people have fun so, with so the site. So photos are, are something. Photos, and, yeah. uh, Shockwave, I've got some Java, mm -hmm. I've got uh, various other types of so formats, uh, some songs, things. some right. real now, that's audio. A that's a question, actually. I right. mean, obviously, Grateful Dead, was, the music was their thing. Right, exactly. So do you actually have Grateful Dead music up there? Well, I've got real audio of the last show uh, really? that he did, uh, that they did in Chicago. How'd you get that? Uh, got it through a friend who was also a Grateful Dead fan who had some real audio that he digitized wow. of the site. Okay. Uh, that was one. So that's great. worth checking out right there. Well, that's worth checking yeah. out. You can li actually listen to the last songs that the dead played together as mm -hmm. a band while you look at these photos. Mm -hmm. uh, there's links to other Grateful Dead sites. There's uh, some shockwave. You know, I try to make it as entertaining as possible uh, where people can just kind of look and watch it. And uh, there's a, some other shockwave, which I did recently, which you can actually touch parts of Jerry Garcia's face and different guitar riffs come up. And you can oh, really? just sort of have an improvisational Grateful Dead uh, Jerry uh, experience of yourself. Right. Well, that sounds yourself. like the summer of love all over again. Right, we'll, exactly. we'll have to go uh, check it out. Right, exactly. Uh, also, with the, speaking of the summer of love, I've got a uh, quick time VR of the uh, love in in uh, Golden Gate oh, Park. Oh, the whole concert. The 30th, as well. well, not the not the whole concert. But just just a view of what that was, and, and you if can you're rotate. and if you're sharp, you'll be able to see that there is actually a picture of Jerry Garcia in the crowd. Okay. Uh, if you if you use the QuickTime VR, uh, so we'll go check thing. it. We'll go check right. it out and see if we can find him in the crowd. Right, exactly. <laughs> so 
Some of the so-called death sites on the web are really very educational, historical, and downright innovative. One of them is a site called Tombtown. And Michelle, that was your creation. And I'm glad you're here tonight. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask you, where did you get the strange idea to build a virtual cemetery on the web? One of our projects included um, a genealogical research. And during the process of going through the cemeteries and finding our study so subjects... So you were actually going through real cemeteries doing work like that? Many, many cemeteries. Yeah. And it became very interesting to, to find that we became more and more curious, not so much about our current studies, but the people around them. We saw uh, headstones there yeah. with people we had no idea who they were about. Do you see All a the... name in years and exactly. you don't know who they were? So we thought, well, heck, why don't we do a 3D uh, VR rendition yeah. of cemeteries? And in its virtual form, you're able to... Learn about these dead, famous dead people. Exactly. Now, let's talk about the 3D VR part of it. That is really cool, because when I went there, you can actually walk through the cemetery, make a left, go down there, and kind of explore. It becomes a real adventure. Very fun. You go through. There are certain paths that you can mm -hmm. take. And you are able to walk up to and around all of the tombstones. Yeah. There's also a tour in Tombtown that you can take. It's a click of a button, and it flies you around uh -huh. and shows you all the different elements that you can use. All right, so let's say we're walking through Tombtown mm -hmm. right now, and I come across the Marilyn Monroe tomb. Right. Now, I can click on that stone and find out about her? Yes, her image comes up in a text, and you have um, her birth and her death. It gives a lot of information about her childhood, how she grew up, mm -hmm. um, the impact that she had on the people around her and the impact that the people around her had on herself. Hmm. And we also tried very hard at making sure that we had information that, that is not generally well known in the yeah. public concerning each individual resident. What kind of people have you included in your cemetery? I mean, I saw Albert Einstein mm -hmm. and Bella Lugosi and, and Marilyn, all, all the... Uh, how many people and what kinds of people do you select? We have um, very famous people. We have celebrities, authors, scientists, mm -hmm. historians, um, Plato, for example. Yeah. Um, and we also have everyday people. We have regular people like you and I who wish to bury themselves or a loved one or a You can pet, bury perhaps. yourself even if you're alive? Even if you're alive. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> you, can bury, you can be immortal. Get all the glory but, without exactly. having to die. Um, one person, for example, thought it would be cute to bury themselves as an atheist, and, and they, huh. they said, uh, off to find off for myself. Yeah. But so, seriously, I mean, mm -hmm. if, a, if a loved one I know actually dies, I could then go to the website and say, I want this person to be in, the, in Tombtown. Yes. Um, you purchase a plot, and you purchase a headstone, huh. you provide the obituary, um, and anything that you want to write about this person, anything that you want the world to know yeah. about your loved one, they'll be able to. That's um, cool. Put so online. people exploring these famous people could bump into my friend and click and find out who he or she exactly, was also. Exactly, right next to any famous person. And, yeah. and you have the option of being buried next to anybody huh. and making special requests. All right, now, one of the cool things, you have a Princess Diana memorial there. Tell us about that. Right. Um, when Princess Diana was killed, we were one of the first websites to provide a memorial for her. Mm -hmm. People wrote in and gave their sentiments and remembrances. We compiled a book and sent it off to um, oh. the... Um, Wherever you send it off Wherever I sent it off yeah. to. And um, in the meantime, we decided that a memorial would be feasible. There's, you can't go and visit her grave. So we set up yeah. this memorial. You can visit the memorial, and then you can still write your remembrances. Yeah. And so you can actually, I, I guess the next step is virtual funerals. I mean, you can actually have people around the world signing a condolence book for just a normal person. That's absolutely true. And we've had several inquiries huh. to do just that. Well, and how do you, I mean, do you add people every week? I mean, a famous person dies, do they get into tomb town? Um, it, a lot, it, it is very time consuming. Yeah. We do as much of it as we can. Um, it's not updated as much as we'd like, obviously. But, yeah, famous people die, they get in there. And, yeah. then, and there's still so many people hmm. out there that, that we can include. We're in the process of building several more cemeteries wow. um, that would be specific to groups. Well, it's like really well done. Tomb Town. Thanks, Michelle. So, Christian, uh, celebrity deaths are sort of a, a huge phenomenon, something everybody's fascinated about. You see the tabloids in the supermarket. They just never seem to stop. Of course, why wouldn't it come to the web as well? Right. Now, tell me about, I've heard these things, death pools. And I think they're kind of all over the web. What, yeah. what, what is a death pool? It's pretty basic. You know, you, you, if you're in a pool, you pick famous people, celebrities. Mm -hmm. They're on your team. Mm -hmm. And if one of them dies, you win. So it's a game, basically, yeah, and you're, yeah. you're, you're playing lottery with, uh, yeah, with celebrities' basically. lives. Basically, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> I guess. Right. So, <laughs> so who, who, who plays these kind of games, and, and what are the rules? Well, uh, a lot of, 
I mean, my pool has a lot of people, and I'm, I'm not the only pool by a stretch. So there's okay. hundreds or thousands of people playing. Out there. The rules on mine are pretty simple. You, you pick five people. Okay. One of them dies, and you win. You win the pool. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Now, what, what is the definition of, of who you pick? What, is it a celebrity? Does it have to be a movie yeah, star? What? The, this, it's kind of intentionally vague. It's mm -hmm. basically someone has to be well-known or a famous celebrity. And, you know, some people are obvious, big mm -hmm. movie stars, right. politicians. Right. But, you know, some people are a little more questionable and since it's my fool I choose right. whether or not they're famous right. enough. So right. I haven't turned anybody down. If they can prove who they are then I let it go. Then I let it go. Okay yeah. now now when people pick are they sort of going for the easy targets you know the, the maybe the older the infirm or or is there like more points if you get somebody that wasn't expected or something I don't like do that? don't do more point more or less points so mm -hmm. you know right now just about all the people I, I thought that just about all the people who are close to death had been picked mm -hmm. but then somebody dies that nobody had but okay. Frank Sinatra and Bob Hope are probably, probably the two biggest. Right. Catherine Hepburn. Okay. You know, so right. old people that are really well known. Yeah. Yeah. And then people tried to go with kind of uh, dark horse picks. Uh -huh. Someone a little bit younger that maybe uh, party or think, yeah. Kind of so like uh, Johnny Depp uh -huh. and people like that. Okay. Robert young. Downey Jr. Exactly. Someone He's maybe picked. known with drugs right. or something like that. You know, that might have a little more higher risk factor. Right. Right. Okay. So. Now, does does the, someone get involved with this? They just come to your site and sign up, or? Well, right now it's only for people who are on the well, which okay. is subscription only. But okay. I'm going to open up either open up this pool start a new pool web-wide. I'm in a couple of wow. other pools, and uh, you get a lot of people, and you get a wider variety of people. So you think people, it's going to be popular? Yeah, I mean, yeah. the one site uh, that I go to all the time even has a community, has a message board. Oh, so talk people about, are... you know, is this person dead? What do you think about this person? So, you know, people talk about it. People yeah. are interested. Yeah. So. All right, now, Christian, I, I got to say one thing. This sounds a little bit sick, okay? <laughs> yeah, well, so yeah. I'm just curious. Are the people playing it, is it fun? Is it sick? Is it yeah. a little bit of both? I think it's what, a little both. What do you I think, think it's a little both. You know, it, we don't play for money. Okay. I think that would be a little bit too right. much. I think if I won, I would feel bad if right. I made money off somebody's death. Right. And especially if it was a lot of money and it might yeah. inspire someone to go out exactly. and actually <laughs> And then, you know, then I, could, I could probably get in trouble. Right. You know? So but, you don't want to do that. So what can yeah. you win? Basically, when somebody wins, the other people in the pool send them a trinket, whether okay. it's a, a keychain or, a, a you know, like a funny book or... Just some random So nothing, thing. yeah. Nothing, nothing real big, just a little kind of memento. Right, right. And I also saw up on your site there's some statistics about, you know, sort of what people pick. What are the most popular uh, category that people I pick? I think uh, actors and musicians. Actors, because they're well-known, yeah. and musicians, rock stars. Right. You know, they have a history right. of dying young. Kind of makes sense. Exactly. And what's sort of your uh, third pick on that list? Uh, politicians. A lot of, you yeah. know, the uh, presidents and ex-presidents right. and people in the Senate and European presidents right. and things like that. Right. So. Makes makes sense. Yeah. I also saw you have some of your uh, fans' uh, poetry and stuff up there. Mm -hmm. um, do you, can yeah. you repeat the uh, John Denver poem? Sure. Like one that? of the one of the Doug Moody is the guy's name mm -hmm. who who writes these poems for me. And the, his John Denver poem said, uh, "Teach me Rocky Mountain High. Just don't teach me how to fly." <laughs> so okay. On that note, let's go check out the site. Okay. <laughs> So, Steve, you've got a website. It's the Virtual Pet Cemetery, yeah. and you and your wife work on this this website. Now, what prompted you to start a pet cemetery? I've always been interested in death and, and how people react to death under different situations. And the web, at the time we started, it was the very beginning of the web, and we wanted to start a new community to see how people would deal with death in this new environment of the web and how they could express themselves. So now... So it's an, it, was a, it was an experiment, basically. It was an experiment. To we find had, out how people dealt with death. We had no idea what we'd get. When we first put it up, the first day we had three responses. Wow. And we were, it was amazing. We didn't think people would respond for three months. We didn't even know how they found our website, let alone that they were responding so quickly. So now why would you pick a pet cemetery, though? Why would you pick an animal? To, to... Because, well, a human cemetery we thought was too close to home. And... Personally, I wouldn't want to share the feelings about my relatives with people on the net. But people are much more open when it comes to pets. They'll say things that you wouldn't go into your office and just talk on and on and on about a relative who died. It would make everybody uncomfortable. Right. But people are more open to speaking about their pets. So as the experiment goes on, obviously mm -hmm. it's grown pretty substantially. What's, what's the outcome? What were the summaries of your experiment? It's very interesting. 
what we found is that people deal with death in different ways. Mm -hmm. Some people are very reserved about it and don't want to reveal too much. Other people say everything. Right. Some people don't are very humorous about the whole situation and want to treat it in a light way, in almost a fun way. And other people are very serious. So people and, react differently to it as well. I mean, I know when I went to the site and I've recently lost a pet in our family and I was getting kind of emotional reading some of these things. There were some pretty sensitive stories that were being told. Yes, um, it's very, that's the other thing that's very interesting about the Virtual Pet Cemetery is it's an emotional site. Definitely. Most sites on the web today are informational. They give you information. This really, they're stories about people's lives yeah. and how they deal with such a tragedy. And it's so emotional. I'm, my wife who works on the cemetery with me, she cries when she, she reads the epitaph. So now tell me, if, if I wanted to post an epitaph for my pet, how would I go about doing that? It's very simple. You, there's a page which says, submit epitaph, and then you just send us email. So that's, it's that simple? That simple. And I can post my picture of my pet and do all those things as we, well? We don't post everything. Okay. And that's a very delicate situation because we want, we want epitaphs that we don't want somebody to just slap something down there and put it up. It would be disrespectful to all the other people who have put their epitaphs on the site. So if we feel somebody's serious and they've really thought about what they're writing, we'll definitely post it. We just want to make sure that it doesn't, it's appropriate for the site. Absolutely. It is a sensitive topic. What are, what are some of the best stories that, that come to mind for you that, that have been posted at the website? There are so many good ones and it's, it's a very personal decision right. what you like. I like the touch turtle, which is the very first. That's the first story, yeah, yeah. That was great. I thought it was wonderful, and I thought um, it had, for me, it was, it was tragic, but it was, it was funny also, and it was very touching. And I think the net net on that story was about this particular type of turtle that didn't actually die. It, right. It's the story about a kid who has a turtle, and he thinks his turtle has died, and so he digs a grave in the backyard and he buries the turtle and then a couple months later he finds out that turtles hibernate in the winter and well hopefully the turtle crawled out of the hole but. yeah but you never know but there's lots of other stories as well it's a great site thanks so much steve so do you have a favorite death website now andrew it's kind of sad to say your favorite death website. See, I really well i mean the whole thing is weird here right? it is but you know the grateful dead site i thought was actually was pretty neat it was a uh, kind of a, a real memorial and it was a place where people could go. I, I didn't know that the, uh, the deadheads or the hippies, if you will, really intersect with the web culture. You wouldn't think they're online, but they really were. I think were, they were, They yeah. really were a big, a big part of it. So I thought that was good. And, and I thought it was fun to play the celebrity game, too. Uh, you think yeah. that's funny? Uh, well, Who's going to die next? I think it's kind of funny. And if I had picked uh, Sonny Bono, maybe I would have been oh, a well. winner, too. So. Well, I guess you have to loosen up a little bit about the subject, right? I mean, right. it's too depressing. Right. People exactly. have to have fun with make it. Fun with, make fun what do you it. think? I, for me personally, I just recently lost a member of our family. One of our pets uh, was killed uh, by a car. And mm -hmm. uh, I thought that the virtual pet cemetery was a really great idea because you don't often get the chance to talk about sure, how you feel sure, about losing yeah. a pet. And it's a great place so to be able to find community there. dealing with death is a there. ritualized kind of thing. And this mm -hmm. sort of helps create that it's ritual. It's really good. I well, Toontown, really I thought it was great too because very educational, great interface. I mean, the subject really wasn't death but history. So I thought mm -hmm. that was a good example. If you'd like any more information about any of the websites we saw tonight, check out our website at cmptd.com, and we'll see you here next week at the Internet Cafe. Net Cafe is made possible by rondiamond.com, the oldies site on the Internet. Music and memories from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, not just another jukebox. Additional support comes from the law offices of Ivan Hoffman, lawyering with integrity for Internet law, copyright, trademark, and other intellectual property law. And by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic.